Professor Dr. Tatyal, and he'll be sharing his expert tips and tricks for the toric eye cell implantation. Thank you, sir, for being with us, and it's an honor to have you here. So, all to uh, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Sonu, for a kind invitation, and all the chairperson on the dais, and my dear friends and colleagues, uh, very good afternoon to all of you. And this is what uh, star people ask me to talk about, the toric ICL. And looking back, the initial two presentations were absolutely important for a starting ICL practice, ICL surgery, and getting a good outcome. And Dr. Sudarshan uh, really made very, very clear what are those important points which makes the ICL perfectly oriented in a patient's eye and gives a perfect vision also. And that holds true for a, a surgery for a toric ICL is not different, except for a, you have a cylindrical power which has to be placed in a desired axis for a patient. As I work up with this patient, the amount of uh, uh, requirement is similar, the digital caliper or a, one optical device to have a wide to wide, the AC depth, everything is almost similar. This is what we talked about, different sizes, it very clearly talked about. Only thing is important for us to, whenever we do a surgery like this, which is a refractive surgery, the pre-selection of these patient counseling, which we talked about, has to be absolutely perfect. Sometimes we don't get a, the desired outcome in these patients, what we normally see, especially with the toric lens, which may give you some sort of a residual uh, cylinder which may not give a good vision to patients sometimes. So this has little more accuracy is required in these patients while placing the ICL in a particular axis. So I would say uh, meticulous surgery is important, especially for axis uh, orientation. Maybe uh, a p uh, p place like ours in RP center where you have IOCT, which we are discussing in terms of uh, the uh, bolt happening. You can measure the bolt on the table it itself. Suppose you have a less than 100 bolt coming up or you have a uh, 1400 bolt coming up. This may only happen if your pre-operative assessment were not correct. Normally in today's scenario, we don't get this scenario at all. As Dr. Sudarshan talked about, thousands of cases we have done yet to disimplant or take out the lens from the anterior chamber is not required. That means the assessment part has been perfectly done by us nowadays in recent time. I had one publication which came up in uh, I think around six, seven years back where we realized that with the new generation ICLs, the cataract and glaucoma part is away because initial, if you see the results, most of the explantation were because of these two reasons, glaucoma and cataract. In recent time, they are in a uh, past now and the most important reason for explantation is posterior segment surgery because of some uh, complication happening like detachment other thing which Dr. Sudarshan talked about. These parameters you just uh, know these things, ICL sizing we talked about. Uh, basically calculation of a toric power is important which you have to give a refractive power to the company and they'll calculate for you through their online uh, calculator and you have a different ordering system with them. You have to confirm their uh, whatever reports they come out with the refraction and then implant lens in a horizontal axis as is added. So basically you have a astigmatism calculation in terms of a refractive, uh, refractive astigmatism has to be calculated there, the steeper axis should be there and lens should be rotated to a desired axis. The recommendation is don't go beyond 22.5 uh, degree away from the central 0, 180 degree and uh, I think mainly because they, they, it, rotation will be difficult intraoperatively in some cases and uh, the sulcus diameter is such that it may not be suitable. It has to be less than two thirds of uh, for one clock hours away from the central axis in these cases. And this is just example of one of patient you can see one right eye if you see here 3.5 diopter spherical 1.5 minus 1.5 diopter cylinder 40 degrees and this is the other parameters. So if you have this refraction, what would be the ICL power which needs to be done for this power? So you can see you have this uh, target lens will be now minus 5.5 and plus 1.5 cylinder, 130 degrees because you have to transport into the plus cylinder in these cases. The actual requirement will be this particular parameter for this toric ICL, but lens order will be a different. 
So you have a 5.5 spherical and cylinder same, but axis now at 152 in that particular order lens. So you have to change the orientation for the implantation. That's basically the difference between the IOL axis or ICL axis, refractive axis and the amount of rotation needed will be dividing the target axis now which is as per the ordered lens. In this particular case it will be around 22.5 degrees from the central area. So this is the diagram which comes with the companies this thing and this is a very very critically important point. This gives an actual orientation of placement of your ICL on the table. This should be carried with you in the operation theater and put on the wall or some assistant will tell you, okay, sir, this is the rotation required for this patient. So this chart is very, very important to be taken inside the OT. So if you do a manual uh, marking, you require a manual devices to mark the uh, reference axis, then the actual axis of implantation should be done. And these are various devices by which you can make a reference axis. And most importantly, classically, we are now, uh, bubble markers can give you a 180, 0 degree and inferior uh, markers. So if you have an image guided system, nothing better than that. That gives you uh, the image uh, taken from the IOL master, which can be now uh, rearranged by taking the picture from the microscope automatically. So this is what we do a marking. The alignment is very simple. Just to show one uh, video, what how we do pr proceed. Once you have a reference marking, you can see this is my reference marking. Then I'll put a alignment, uh, the axis of a toric lens marking here which is uh, 8 degrees from the central 0 180 degree here the marking should be very sharp and clear that is very important it should not be muzzy which we talk about in cataract surgery also is similar so i'll make uh, three opening two side posts for uh, my uh, uh, biomembrane aspiration of viscoelastic and manipulation of lens and i normally use one percent sodium hydronate for um, forming the ac and lens is implanted subsequently so if you form the AC with the sodium hyaluronate, the lens opening is much better controlled, doesn't open with a jerk and it will not damage the surrounding structures also. And the helon or a whichever material you're using should be of that quality, which gives a clarity, no inflammation, it comes out as a bolus and very less chances of a retained viscoelastic inside and the glaucoma part is hardly there in these cases. So this is a technique by which you can, you can disengage or engage the haptics behind the uh, iris plane or pupillary plane then rotate the lens before you take out the viscoelastic that is very very important you cannot rotate the lens after you take out the viscoelastic that's the uh, one important point you have to learn in a toric implantation so i have placed my lens in a, these axis before i had implanted hydrate the wound and do a bimineral aspiration which is very very controlled aspiration of viscoelastic and the central port also helps you to take out the uh, whatever viscoelastic is there behind the eye cell also. So these are two simple tricks uh, which can be used. So if you are image guided, you, it is much better. Just to show the image guided, it tells you where incision has to be made. The incision size is also made. The side port marking can be also be done. So once I make a similar uh, markings here, this is how IOL is uh, to be placed. Once I will bed with the BSS, then put a uh, methyl cellulose over the uh, cartridge. Take out the lens with a cotton applicator. Then make sure you, it has a right orientation by looking at the one mark here, triangle, diamond mark in the right hand side corner. Then pull the lens after holding a good chunk. Don't uh, take it the edge, otherwise you'll chip the lens. Pull it with the bimanual, uh, both hands moving here, right and left. Make sure it doesn't get stuck into the cartilage. And same injection here, central jello below the you know uh, viscoelastic cushion here which will, uh, don't allow the damage to the anterior capsular lens many people do hydro implantation also I, i'm not very good fan of that uh, i'm not sure how much the fluid is going to disrupt the anterior lens capsule so this part you can see how e easily it can be implanted inside the lens again rotate the lens to the main axis of implantation before you take out the vis viscoelastic this point you have to all learn because it's very difficult to rotate the lens after you've taken out the viscoelastic. You might damage the lens anterior capsule also. With this uh, maneuver, you can take out the entire 90% or 99% of the viscoelastic with a simple uh, anterior chamber uh, manipulation. And with this, you can take out the remaining viscoelastic, which may be there a little bit underneath the uh, ICL surface through the central port. And in fact, you can go to periphery also. In the two holes, you can still aspirate the viscoelastic. The complete viscoelastic removal is possible if you use a sodium halonate. While methyl cellulose may not give you that access. You can see this is around 550 volt, which Sudarshan was talking about, can be measured on the table also. 
तो दिस टाइप ऑफ सिंपल टेक्निक्स इज आल्सो एप्लीकेबल टू टॉरिक इम्प्लांटेशन आल्सो लाइक यू डू फॉर स्पेरिकल लेंसेज ऑल्सो पोस्ट ऑफ यू कैन ऑलवेज एसेस द आई ओ पी विजुअल एक्विटी एंड द रेजिडल रिफ्रेक्टिव एर हाउ डू यू नो दैट योर लेंस इज वेल प्लेस यू नीड टू नो द स्टीपर एक्सेस विच योर रिफ्रेक्टिव एक्सेस एंड सी आफ्टर फुल डायरेटेशन वेर द आई सी एल इज लोकेटेड एंड सब्सिक्वेंटली यू कैन मैनिपुलेट there has been no instance where i had to re rotate the icl lens which is uh, normally remains in the same place as you have placed unlike the iol cataract surgery which can rotate subsequently that's the beauty of uh, toric icls to be measured i think to summarize you require a very good pre op assessment like you do for a spherical icl same for a toric icls only important thing is a good refraction to get up refractive amount a refractive cylinder and whichever lens is ordered make sure the lens is made in such a manner which you have got it best would be a customized lens of a same power same axis but normally the inventory may not give you same uh, axis lens but that can be implanted in a way it gives you a right uh, refractive corrections i think if you take these two few tips you will have always be happy in a toric icls because most patient will have a toric icl requirement in a refractive corrections thank you for your kind listening thank you sir that for that wonderful and lightning talk a quick question sir uh, for the toric icl when would you like to go in and you know if you have a rotation of the icl so how do you manage that i mean what is your protocol when would you like to just rotate and take the lens back to the position or you would like to go for one size up so what is your protocol when you find a refractive surprise post toric yeah i think what uh, sony is uh, trying to highlight which i missed in, uh, i didn't read the slide properly because the only chance where the toric icl might move from its axis is when the sizing is not appropriate that to a smaller size icl if you have a larger size it may not rotate it will get fixed there but small size yes sometimes it can rotate especially in a cases where you have a very deep anterior chamber like cases where people might put for a stable keratoconus there you may have a chance or very very high myopic patient sometimes or if you have some damage to the uh, icl sometimes you may have a chipping in the icl which may sometimes cause a you know rotation happening so never leave the chipped icl behind or sometimes you can put a inverse icl also which you may not pick up for sometimes and it can give you a different orientation but right time would be you know if you feel what is the cause if it is a small size then it has to be replaced and go for a new sizing lens if you feel there is some sort of viscoelastic underneath or there is some sort of inflammation happening then you have to maybe dilate the pupil see if the viscoelastic might come out control the pressure control the inflammation that you might uh, try to re rotate as i said it's uh, very difficult to re rotate the normal size uh, icls but uh, you can try maybe after a few days or a week don't do immediately next day analyze the patient next day do anti segment oct see the bald see the orientation dilate the pupil see what is the actual cause if possible you can do a uvm to see if the haptics are nicely oriented in the sulcus area because there have been a multiple studies we have done also all the four haptics may not be properly oriented in the sulcus some of them may get stuck in the jonules and it might get released after few days also it has happened so you wait for some days and before don't jump for a immediate rotation sir uh, you have done a two paracentesis in your case see most of the people worried about suddenly if it is flip inside then you have to take out reload it and uh, once again continue the procedure so if you just go in with a one uh, blunt dialer from the paracentesis second opening when we, when we start injecting suppose if you know that it's already flipping in with the second instrument in the other person is it going to help sir ha uh, it will definitely go to help for those people who are doing hydro uh, injections yeah. where the lens can open very fast and you require a second but as so if i use a sodium hyaluronate the lens opens very slowly you still have a time and most young people don't try to inject the lens fast inside the anterior chamber just see little bit how it is opening then go slowly sometimes i leave the you know trailing haptic in the wound itself and so that i can manipulate the lens that's a very good trick uh, don't try to inject everything inside together and never try to place your haptics behind the pupillary plane to begin with that that is going to create more problems for you and yes uh, second in- instrument is very very handy normally i'll tell my sister keep the second instrument ready if i need i'll immediately take it and these two side ports are very very handy for uh, manipulation also Thank yeah you, doctor sir, sir. A, la- a last quick question from professor dr cooper yeah, yeah. sir no i just want to add on to what uh, dr titial said with your permission sir yeah yeah sure okay, when you putting the toric lenses uh when they inside they don't rotate he said absolutely right so when you putting the lens you put in one haptic in 
the leading haptic. At that time, you can rotate the lens easily to the axis without the other haptic being tucked in yet. So your leading haptic, uh, trailing haptic is inside. And since one is in the sulcus, one is in the front of the iris, you can rotate it easily. Otherwise, it becomes very difficult to rotate. Once both the haptics are inside, which you want to rotate, you have to use both the hands. If you push it one, it will rotate. It won't rotate. It gets pushed, and it comes back. It coils back. So come to the excess where you want to park the lens on the top with one haptic still on the iris, and then tuck it in there. I think with that, for the beginners, I think you will not have a problem. Otherwise, your excess might not be accurate on the table. Just a little thing. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for that wonderful talk. Okay. So maybe we can. Yeah. In the meantime, when the next speaker says something. Now we have. Okay. Yeah, yeah, please, please, please. please, please. Uh, just I agree with uh, Dr. Ketyal that if you inject the lens slowly, you can control the opening of the lens till the last moment. You can see it opening slowly and one can rotate the cartridge and make it right. And second thing is you talked about uh, measuring the vault on the table in toric lenses. It will help if you have a second lens handy uh, on that time. So. Uh, but it does help in cases where the error is spherical. Last month only, I had one patient where the vault was almost more than 1000. So we rotated the lens vertically on the table so that in both the eyes we had an optimal vault. So that was uh, what I wanted to explain. That, yeah. That's a very valid point. 